You're listening to Sarah Talk. It's political. You could run a fucking pet rock against right. Donald Trump, and I would vote for the pet rock. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're at right uh, yeah. now. Yeah. Critical. Uh, hang on. Let me <laughs> gonna change some words here. All right. Ready? <clears throat> Adults with religious confusion who truly believe in a higher power that created us and actually cares what we do with our penises and vaginas should be treated with care, compassion, and kindness, but must not be officially affirmed in their confusion, no matter how sincerely held. Fuck you. And positively, LGBT positive. In many states, you can still be evicted from housing simply for being gay or transgender. Stand and fight with us. Oh, and occasionally completely absurd. I don't know if you've ever seen a lightning bug when he flies around with a flame, a light coming out of his behind. The lightning bug got a flame coming out of his butt. Oh, it's a beautiful night tonight. All the sodomites are out. (laughs) And now, from Orlando, Florida, your host, Sarah Austin. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sarah Talk. I feel like that should have said from Lakeland, Florida today, yeah. just because. I know, right? Uh, today is March 24th, 2018. It's episode 103. I can't believe it. Of what? the big show. Right? Mandy, do you remember? Mandy Imus in the house, Hi. everybody. Hey. OG. OG co-host Mandy oh, Imus. Do you remember back in your... <laughs> Back in your apartment mm-hmm. with the uh, box of donuts and the and the dogs on the and table the dogs and the on dogs. the table <laughs> eating donuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, we've we come such have, a long where's way. Where's Britain? We should have had like a reunion show. Oh, right. We totally we could need to still do that. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll have I, to I take Britain. another Saturday off and we'll do a reunion show with yeah. Britain. Yeah, yeah. Um, so today we are going to talk about um, gun violence. Big surprise. Uh, <laughs> feel like we've talked a lot about that lately. Uh, that we did take a little break last week. Yeah. So That's that was that was a nice kind of step away from mm-hmm. from the uh, drama. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, the second half of the show is sort of a news grab bag, <laughs> and uh, just some random stuff that I found that I thought was interesting that isn't really interconnected. But yeah, it's um, a hodgepodge. And we're having issues with the feed apparently. So it kicked off once tonight. In yeah. the process of what, just getting what? getting going, so if the feed drops off, hang with us. Hang we'll with get us. Back in we'll there. try to get it back together, and I'll make like maybe one more. If it drops one more time, I'll make <laughs> one more attempt, and then <laughs> and then I'm done. <laughs> and then you could just listen to the podcast like you listen to most podcasts. Her philosophy is: I'll try anything twice. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I'll try anything twice. <clears throat> um, okay, <laughs> so we're we're going to talk about. The March for Our Lives mm-hmm. rallies that happened mm-hmm. today, um, and because we were at one, I don't like have loads of statistics and <laughs> stories and data right. and stuff to share with you. We have real um, life. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about our experiences. Uh, however, if you happened to go to your own local March for Our Lives march, I want to hear about it. Give us a call at two two four four zero Sarah two two four four zero seven. 2724. I have the phone line patched in. You can give us a ringy ding and tell us uh, about how your event went. And you can also love to hear about post it. your pictures to us yeah. or yeah. tweet them to yeah. us yep. or we want to see where you were, what you were up to, yeah, who you were with. So uh, let's start with, with ours. Um, we went to Lakeland, Florida, mm-hmm. um, which is the heart of Polk County. And if you've been listening long enough, then you know that Polk County is the redneckiest redneck Mm -hmm. place of Florida. Yeah, unfortunately. That'd be. (laughs) You know, I mean, we have our sheriff who's like, you know, every teacher would have two guns Mm -hmm. and a a pot in every classroom. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's just the kind of, he is very much a kind of a Wild West style of law enforcement, and I I don't like it. But it seems to fit with Polk County. Sure. So in the same way that I was surprised at how many people showed up for Pride last year, mm-hmm. and this was at the same park yep. in downtown Lakeland, um, I was impressed with the number of people that came out for this I thing, too. too. Again, being, you know, yeah. uh, relatively r- rural and mm-hmm. pro-gun kind of yeah. an area, I was I was surprised at the number of people that came out. It was really great. Um, and... 
and the, these kids, uh, so uh, they were just so amazing. Um, it was like seven or eight of the junior high, high school kids. Yeah. From from a couple of from local, local schools. schools, yeah. Yeah, so they got together. Um, they put this thing on, and and it was, you know, they really wanted it to be about this the the students and mm-hmm. what they had to say. So, uh, there were you know some students that did some speaking for the first hour or so. Uh, some of them had like some slam poetry, and some of them had mm-hmm. like this is how I felt, and mm-hmm. some of them had like this is how I feel when a fire alarm goes off now, and yeah. these are the sh- things that we think about, and um, so it was it was really powerful to hear it, you know, in these kids' voices, like this is what they're thinking about mm-hmm. when they go to school every day, when they should be fucking thinking about I don't know learning shit, right? Like, oh, did I study hard enough for my geometry quiz, <laughs> right? Or who's the kid I can copy off of next <laughs> yeah, year? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the smart kid in math that can <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of can copy? That's how I got through <laughs> most of my high school math classes. Um, so I got through college. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then, then they did uh, March, which Bec- was cool. Yeah, and and again, like they were trying to to be true to the national march. Um, that was being organized by these, uh, mm-hmm. these kids in Parkland. And um, and so they set off the students first to lead the march mm-hmm. around the park, which I thought was really great. And um, and then they did what I thought was really cool. They did this Q&A session yeah, at I the really end. I was that. not I expecting it. Yeah. I yeah. didn't think that that was a thing. And then they were like, well, we're going to do this. And that is really cool. Mm-hmm. And there was a moment, and I, this is true of Q and A's in general. But there's a moment that you're just like, is somebody gonna is somebody gonna ask a question? <laughs> somebody somebody should go ask a question, right? Because <laughs> they're like, okay, so who's gonna be first? And nobody ever wants to be <laughs> no, first, right? Of course not. Um, but yeah, it was really great. Like, uh, yep. And, and they had um, some local people that are trying to get elected yep. out there in their corner. That was great. Yeah. Um, I, was I, it the Women's Democrats of? Polk County or yeah, of Lakeland? Women Democratic Lakeland, Voters of Lakeland, I think. Yeah. But who had, they had, they were like, you know, grateful to them because they've been throwing them money for yeah. this. Which yeah, is right. Really good. And, um, and like the, the other marches, uh, through around there, they had a, uh, booth set up where you could register to vote because right. mm-hmm. that's how we're going to fix this. Yeah. You know, um, we had our kids with us. Mm hmm. And then we had signs and we had signs. Yes. And, and our eight year old called him a seven. He just he's turned just eight. turned eight. Cut me some slack child. Listen, it's 2018. <laughs> he's eight years old, even though he acts like he's 18. Right. And he, and he talks, well, yeah. he claims that he's nine because yeah. he doesn't know for as smart as this kid is. He in can't math, figure out. He that. can't figure out. <laughs> That he's oh my god not nine that actually he's just if, turned eight. If you think about his reasoning, it does kind of no. Make I sense. get it. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> when you're born, it should be zero you're... until your first birthday, and then you're one. Is that no. what he's thinking? No, he says when you're born, you're one. Oh, when you're born, you're one. Right. And right, then right. Yeah. once you get to your first birthday, that's your second birthday. So mm-hmm. you should be because on your birthday, yeah. oh, that's your yes. first birthday. Yeah. Right. He's a month ahead. Right. Yeah. Right. Or a year ahead. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Have some more rum. It's okay. <laughs> you don't have to work tonight. <sighs> so regardless of his age. Right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure, like, you know, it, how he was connecting <clears throat> right. with uh, the events that had happened. And, you know, they didn't really talk about it a lot at school mm-hmm. when it happened, you know. Um, like, he knew he knew that it happened. I had talked to him, and, he, and they, at the school, they flew the flag half staff right. and so he knows what that means and we talked about that and right like but but also, like we talked about it right but all and and he told me that some of the kids were talking about it so i don't right. really know how much they addressed it at the school right um but also we're so far removed now it's been more than a month and a month for a seven eight year old right is a long time, time. Right. he yeah. has no idea and no he's had a birthday and a party yeah, and, yeah. and grandparents were here so yep I, you know, I was I was wondering that too. Like, is he really gonna get this? Because it's so far out. It's not like, oh, this happened last week, and now we're gonna go right. So, but like on on the other hand, then um, there were moments where um, so you had a question that you wanted to ask 
the, mm. of these kids at the end of the thing. And, and so I went up and asked your question. Um, it was a good question for you. Yeah. And I'm proud that you went up and did that because <laughs> I didn't think you were going to. No, really? No, I, w- I wondered no. if you would. <laughs> yeah, sure. Because it had been Whatever. a long day and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the time we got home, like, I wouldn't I have talked no, to nobody. I, I know. It's fine. Um, and I got back and, and like at some point, like towards the end when they're wrapping up the Q and a, he was like, I want to go talk into the microphone. <laughs> this is the why this, see, this is what happens when I have microphones. <laughs> you know what that does. But he, I said, well, what are you going to say? And he says that lives are more important than guns. Oh, right. And I was like, well, they're taking questions. So phrase that in the form of a question. And he was like, okay, which is more important? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not quite exactly no. what well, I meant. I mean, <laughs> but good, I for mean good for him. Some yeah. people I feel like is necessary to ask. Mm-hmm. Well, and, <laughs> right? and that's like, another thing. Like I think about, like this thing was put on by a bunch of teenagers in high schools. It's amazing. But I think that if a little seven, eight year old went up to them and mm-hmm. said that, they would have embraced that. Oh, yeah. um, absolutely. And I feel like the, the conversation, as <laughs> sucky as it is, needs to start with our seven and eight year olds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we need to be, able, they need to be able to have these conversations mm-hmm. in a safe place. Yep. Um, and, you know. <sighs> now, do you guys feel that they should have addressed it more? In their school? I struggle with that because yeah. I don't know what's too much. Like they do active shooter drills. And, and to hear and to hear your lot. to hear yeah. your five year old come home from kindergarten and talk about how the very first when, time they did when it. When they do a lockdown, there's a special sound that plays and they know that they have to go into the closet, <gasps> yep. shut all the lights off, shut the door, lock the door, go go into the closet with the lights off and stay as still and as quiet as they can huddled together. Like you right? Right. I just like to know that that's how his that was his kindergarten experience, and each year they this is something that they do actively multiple times through the year. Yep. I've gone to the school where I've I've gone to drop something off or pick something up or pick him up or whatever, where they've been in the middle of a lockdown drill, and it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even though in your mind you know they're just doing a drill, they're still doing a drill. So it's not just the students doing the drill; it's administration doing a drill. So everything's locked. You're in the parking lot. You're standing there, and all you can hear is the echoing bell sound mm. of the bell, the drill bell. And you can't get your kid. No, and and I you can't, can't get my go kid. inside. You can't, can't even go, go inside. You can't even go into the office. Right. You cannot access. It is locked tight. Right. And it's like that was hard enough for me the first time that happened, and I was just like, "What do you mean they're in lockdown? Why are they? Where are the cops? Why are?" And one of the other parents was like, it's a drill. It's it's okay. It's yeah. just a drill. I'm like, no, this is not okay. Yeah. Right. What is my five-year-old is in there. What is he? Like? Right. So like, I worry about like, that's like, what's too much information for him to get mm-hmm. because they're already doing that. Cause I mean, times when year. we grew right. up and we had like tornado drills, like that even scared that me. That scared yeah, yeah. me. And that was natural disaster. You know, like mm-hmm. putting like, the book over oh, your yeah. head. And I couldn't imagine having oh. to go into a closet and turn the lights right? off. With no. A... And that's and so, so intense. I want you to talk about the Nerf gun story. Okay. But before that, for those of you who have just joined us in the Facebook chat and the Facebook live stream, um, if you attended your local March for Our Lives event today. We want to hear from you. 224-40-SARAH, 224-407-2724. Um, we want to hear about what event you went to and how it was. Or type it up. On yeah, here. yeah. Shoot us a message yeah. in the chat. Okay, so our <sighs> son in the Nerf gun. Okay, so he got birthday money. Because everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'll give you 25 bucks. Oh, yeah, I'll give you 25 bucks. So kid had like oh, a lot of money. Eighty dollars to spend at Target. <laughs> he's been asking for a Nerf gun for like two years. And he's been very disappointed for like two years. Now now mind you, he's had Nerf guns. Yeah. Right. He, he had these little, little small thing that you pull they, the yeah. thing back and it shoots one. It's fine. And, yeah. But he wants the mega one, the magazine and the mm-hmm. And I have been very like, I don't know. And this is really hard for me because I grew up in a time where 
That was just a thing. Right. It was normal, well, and nobody thought twice about it. Right. And we had G.I. Joe mm. guys that shot missiles at each other and shit, and like Water nobody even thought about yeah. that and kind of to stuff. to that point, I grew up in a house where we were not even allowed to wear camouflage. Mm-hmm. We weren't allowed to pretend we had got, like, that was just forbidden. Wow. So, yep. you know, like, we're two different, like, per- coming at it from two, so, but it's like, okay, you want a nerf, fine, you I only hesitate with it because he has a sister. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm like, I'm just afraid you're going to put her eye out with a Nerf gun. Like, So anyway, he's been really upset that we haven't gotten him a Nerf gun. We haven't gotten the Nerf gun. Santa hasn't brought him the Nerf gun. Whatever. <laughs> so he's got $80, and he's, like, he asked me point blank day of his birthday party, did you buy the Nerf gun for me for my birthday? And I'm like, nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> Because I got him Lego Dimensions things for his Lego Dimensions. Cause... Which I learned all about today. <laughs> I learned but, all about. But I was like, you know, that's fine. That's good. He's building his collection there. And it, I didn't really spend a lot on his birthday presents. So, and I knew he was going to get money from various people. So I was like, no, no, no. Because he started crying, like upset that he wasn't saying <gasps> to the world. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, Jesus. So I said, listen, you're going to get birthday money. And then... You can go pick out your Nerf gun with your birthday money, and you can, if that's what you want, or you can buy whatever you want. It's gonna be your money. You can buy whatever you want. So we go to Target, and he picks out this pack of four Nerf guns, <laughs> two shotgun rifle style, mm-hmm. like <laughs> I've heard this noise for three days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna shoot you! <laughs> stupid Nerf gun at me. Um, and and it's not like it loads multiple mm-hmm. bullets. It's like one at a time. I should have looked at the one with the magazine. Probably would have been a lot less annoying because right. it's like every time he wants to shoot, he's got to go. Right. <laughs> and it's so loud. So okay, I banned it to the outside, outside toy. But he comes in. He says, "All right, I'm gonna take my Nerf gun to school, so that." If a bad guy comes into school, I can shoot him with a Nerf gun. Right? I just like Captain Picard. (laughs) Face palm. Seriously? No, stop. So then I'd have this whole discussion with him about, you shoot a bad guy who has a real gun with your toy gun. All you're going to do is annoy the hell out of him. And then he's just going to shoot you right in the head. You're dead. Like, that's what will happen here. Right. But, like, this is the way an eight-year-old is thinking. Right. I mean, he's, he's like, the intention is, I want to save the day. I want to save my friends. I want to be, right. you know. I want to stop the I bad guy. I want to stop the bad guy. But it's like, oh, buddy. And then not even, like, okay, so let's just separate the bad guy. You show up to school with a Nerf gun, you're going to get mm-hmm. expelled. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's, like, multiple layers there. Where not, it's only, just like, oh. not only that. If his mindset is, I want to shoot the bad guy with a gun, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I see his point, but then you go back to the whole, who is the actual bad guy? Right. Right. If the cops come in, are they going to shoot? How do they differentiate between the good guy with the gun and the bad guy with the gun? Yes, absolutely. Uh, It's such a a tightrope. Naomi says, it's so much fun to steal the Nerf gun from your kid and turn the tide on him. (laughs) That's why we have a four pack. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it came with two of the larger ones and then two, two of the little micro minis with the pull pull release. Right, and um, I can fire the, I could fire the small one faster than the big one. Right, big well, because the big one you have to actually pull the the right the, the barrel, barrel pops down pops down in the middle yeah. and you have to pull it forward. Yeah, like a in. shotgun. And then after you get it up, you still have to cock it back. Right. But yeah. So they actually make these guns like fake real guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For kids. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's it's, insane. Yep. Like, why? Well, right. and there's been... What's wrong with and, just the and, normal... And, like, the rule is, like, it has to have a bright orange tip. Yeah. Like, that's the rule. It can be any color, but it has to... It, like, it could be a black... So it could look like a real gun, but it has to have an orange tip on the bar- end of the barrel. And... And when the, you're a police officer and you roll you're up... You're not looking for an orange and, tip. Uh, and Tamir is sitting on the in the playground with his toy gun... Well, and there have been children shot and killed because police officers right, have mistaken toy guns. Right. 
But or, why are we even making these weapons, not weapons, but these fake weapons for our children that imitate a real rifle, right? right? And well, a real, do you remember a real in the gun recent, with a magazine? Like, in the recent like wake of these tragedies, Disney has yeah, we were come talking about and, that this and, morning, yeah, and and pulled or this like, afternoon. They, remember, they don't even like, sell bubble guns anymore. Right, They're nothing. Right, they had yeah. to change it to a bubble wand. Yeah, and like all of the little toy blaster guns and yep. all of the Star Wars guns don't get them. You can't get it's, them at Disney. It's crazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> what are they going to sell in Star Wars Land? I really want to know. That was the <laughs> not guns, the, light, the, yeah. not blasters, lightsabers. Light exactly. Sabers. Oh, that's a good point from Megan. Mm -hmm. Yes, Megan says I didn't even have those thoughts in right? my head at that age. It is sad. It's where our country it's is. So it, yes, true. absolutely. Again, that's what I'm saying. Like when I was a kid, um, when I was his age. My neighbor kids and I, I, I lived on, on the block that I lived on, there was um, two kids in my class, and of one of those kids had two brothers. And so all five of us mm. played together all the time. You know what we played? Cops and robbers? We shot like G.I. <laughs> Joes back and forth. Uh -huh. and you know what I mean? Like We played like kids. Right. Yeah. And, and, but kids can't be kids anymore. When I was seven and eight, I remember, like, second grade. So second grade, um, I was in a school that was expanding, and we had temporary classrooms, which are portable classrooms, yeah, or, like, trailers. Uh, pause and explain that mm. just in a little more depth for the people who are not from Florida, because so, that's a weird thing. Yes. No, I know what it is. We had it so, in Michigan. Yeah. No, we didn't have it. Okay, well, Maybe for you're... small folk, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> um, small Illinois folk. I don't know. Small whatever, town, small whatever. Small town, whatever. <laughs> Um, so a portable definition, I guess it's like a mobile home, but it's mm -hmm. a classroom. Mm -hmm. It's like a trailer. Yeah, it's like a trailer. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, much like you'd find on a construction site, except it's a classroom. It's Got it. So my okay. second grade classroom was a portable. Mm -hmm. And Which is very... So absurd. So for... We, we had that too. It's so absurd. I'm sorry. I think... So I got Our school was growing. We didn't have enough classrooms for I the kids. You. So they brought in portables while they were building the I new get building. It. I get it. I just think it's weird. It's just that you came from a small right, town that didn't on. grow as bigly as bigly. bigly. <laughs> <laughs> I need a sound effect somewhere. I don't have a thing plugged in. <laughs> Damn. I'm gonna have that to edit so something horrible. in. Horrible. It didn't grow as quickly as my town did and my school did. So just shut it up and listen to my story. <laughs> um so my biggest fear it was early in the school year. Uh -huh. We're in this portable. Early in the school year is what time in Florida? Rainy, thunderstormy, oh, hurricane season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very early in the school year. There's a horrible, horrible storm outside. We do evacuate the, from the trailer into the main building. And while we're walking, lightning struck the ground. And about 30 kids in front of me just whoosh, hit the ground. Everybody was okay. But for the rest of the school year, that was my fear. What if a thunderstorm comes? <laughs> like... <laughs> Again, right? Not what if a guy shows up with a yeah, gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what right. if a thunderstorm comes? Right. What if God mm. comes? <laughs> what if God comes? An act God. of God. But like seriously, <clears throat> that's an okay thing to worry about if you're in school. Right. I right. shouldn't have to worry that my seven year old is not concentrating on his science fair project, right? Because he's too worried about whether his light up shoes are going to give away his position in an active shooter situation. Okay, this has been the longest Marin Open ever. This is so much longer than I anticipated. I am so this sorry. Um, so, <laughs> so let's move on. All right. Um, this is uh, David Hogg, survivor of the Parkland shooting, speaking at the March for Our Lives in Washington. And I haven't, this is like fresh news to me. I haven't watched the, the video at all. Corruption shackles the District of Columbia. The winter is over. Change is here. The sun shines on a new day, and the day is ours. For the fir first time, voters show up 18% of the time in midterm elections. Not anymore. Hmm. I love this kid. Right? Yeah. And, now, who and this is the kid that, like, all the Alex Jones nuts came out and was like, oh, look at this crisis actor. Right. He's being paid to pretend like he... Mm -hmm. Who here is going to vote in the 2018 election? He's our next president. Maybe not next, no, but a few years down the if road. If you listen real close, 
you can hear the people in power shaking. They've gotten used to being protective of their position, chewing safety, the safety of inaction. Inaction is no longer safe, and to that we say, no more. 96 people, 96 people die every day from guns in our country, yet most representatives have no public stance on guns. And to that, we say, no more. We are going to make this the voting issue. We are going to make, take this to every election, to every state and every city. We are going to make sure the best people get in our elections to run, not as politicians, but as Americans. Because this, this is not cutting it. When people try to suppress your vote, and there are people who stand against you because you are too young, we say no more. When politicians say that your voice doesn't matter because the NRA owns them, we say no more. When politicians send their thoughts and prayers with no action, we say no more. And to those politicians supported by the NRA that allow the continued slaughter of our children and our future, I say get your resumes ready. <laughs> yes. Love him. Today is the beginning of spring, and tomorrow is the beginning of democracy. Wow. Okay, so about 20 years oh ago, he God. would be my new crush. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Damn, wow. boy. Wow. Good was... for him. Good for all of them. Right. Wow. I... I'm I like, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> That's what a kid. Right. Yeah. 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 I, and again, he, like he's more adult than ninety eight percent of the adults I know. Well, isn't so? Wasn't he the one that His went? His dad to, was FBI. Right, but wasn't he the one that was at the the chat with Rubio? Uh, was he the one? I don't think he was. Who I can't remember which ki one of those kids that was. It was but the other. I think, I think it was, it was the, the other one. The other one. Yeah. Maybe. Correct us uh, if we're wrong, but I yeah, feel I like think, it was the no, other I one. No, I think you're right. But I'm have to look like. It up now. Uh, if it's it, the Rubio kid, uh, even more. All of, all no, he was of the them, one that though, was the dad of like, the FBI. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all of them. This kid, the kid that was like, hey, tell me right now, you're not going to take NRA money. Yeah. That kid, mm -hmm. uh, Emma Gonzalez, all of these kids. Yeah. Th they are ch going to change things. Yeah. I'm here to tell you. Mm -hmm. Like it or not. And guess what? Marco Rubio couldn't say it. Right? Oh, of course not. Um, okay, so let's move into a couple of the related stories here on the topic of gun violence. There are a couple of stories I wanted to touch on. Um, first, a 17-year-old male shot two other students at Great Mills High School in Maryland on Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. Probably just a blip on your mainstream media news cycle, um, but I wanted to include it here for a few reasons. Okay, here's what happened. At 7.55 a.m., just before classes started, Austin Wyatt Rollins shot at a female student who apparently he'd had a relationship with that recently ended with a Glock semi-automatic handgun. Another male student was also shot. The school's resource officer responded in less than a minute and fired a round at the shooter. The uh, various news reports say that the shooter also fired, fired a round, but they weren't really specific about whether... Like they were exchanging fire, or uh, the details were kind of depending on which source you look at. Yep, were kind of all over the place. Um, <laughs> stand by. <laughs> um, the shooter was later pronounced dead. Resource officer unharmed. The 14-year-old male student sustained a gunshot wound to the thigh and was in stable condition. The 16-year-old. Jalen Willie was shot in the head. Jalen was reported as being in critical condition with life-threatening injuries, but Thursday night, her mother chose to hold a press conference to share that her daughter was brain dead. She said, quote, On Tuesday this past week, our lives changed completely and totally forever. My daughter was hurt by a boy who shot her in the head. She will not make it. We will be taking her off life support this evening. 
I cannot imagine as a parent <clears throat> being put in that position. I cannot imagine. And Anthony, a paid shill, an adult, a Pied Piper, this kid from the high school you're talking about? Please provide me the evidence. How many mass shootings have you survived? Show me the evidence. Right. Right? YouTube videos are not research, no. by the way. Poke, poke, poke wait, on Google wait. and you get I want to see Alex his birth Jones. certificate. Like, uh, no, 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 but seriously. But no. no, if that's what you believe, right. come with evidence. Yeah. But if this kid was enrolled in the school and at that school on the day of the shooting... Right. Then he is a victim of the fucking shooting. Period. The end. And he gets to say whatever, whatever the fuck right. he wants in that scenario. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. This one in Maryland was the 17th school shooting in 2018, according to CNN it's Research. It's March. It's March. Right? Right. Pro 90 days, people. <laughs> Prove me. Even. Okay. Stand okay. by. Anthony? Uh, Anthony's recent comment says, prove me wrong. No, no, no. You're the one making a positive claim. The burden of proof lies on the claim maker. Your claim is that he is a paid shill. Therefore, the burden of proof relies on you. The end. Moving on. Second, in an incident that occurred last weekend in Mississippi, according to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, a 13-year-old girl was shot to death by her 9-year-old brother over an argument about a video game controller. Sheriff Cecil Cantrell told CNN that the mother was preparing lunch in the kitchen. The boy wanted the controller, knew where to find the handgun, which was kept in a nightstand next to the bed, and shot his sister in the back of the head. The girl was taken to the Children's Hospital in Memphis, where she was pronounced dead Sunday. So, take the guns. I'm done. We were talking about this earlier. Uh, on the scale of everybody gets guns on this end, and nobody gets guns on this end, I have been happily right in the middle. Some people should be able to have some guns. Some people should not be able to have any guns. I'm over it now. Y'all are proving that you can't be trusted. And I'm moving further and further down that scale towards, fine, take them then. Take them. Mm -hmm. you, you're screaming they're going to take my guns anyway. Fine. And for every, like, I'm a responsible gun owner, I keep, this woman probably thought, this right? mother, probably right. thought, oh, I'm a responsible gun owner. I've taught my children well. Right. They wouldn't. And here you are. She passed a background check. She mm -hmm. waited her three days. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And guess what happened? Right? And, and again, like, I feel for your loss. I really can't imagine. Like, I just can't imagine something like that happening with my kids. I can't. So finally, the government package funding package mm. <laughs> that finally passed it, the omnibus bill it's got a bunch of fucking garbage in it got a bunch of things that aren't so bad but we prevented yet another Merck and shutdown right <laughs> um, and um anthony you can't be you can't be trusted with a gun. <laughs> we don't know Anthony. You can't make that Anthony. claim. Well, I'm saying it right now. Shut up. <laughs> Do you know Anthony? I don't know Anthony, but I don't want to. I don't know. Listen. All opinions expressed on Sarah Talk are those of the <laughs> individual <laughs> right? speaker and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Sarah Austin Media, oh Sarah Talk, gosh. America, or the universe. Okay. Oh. So, so uh, You're supposed to be the peacemaker. What's going on here? Oh, she's done. She's Whoever done. Whoever said that. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm done too. Kids are getting murdered and people are like, hmm. All right, listen up. Hmm. So this, this funding Stupid. package, right? It includes all kinds of wonderful things, like the $1.6 billion to the border wall. Oh, this fucker. Um, but we're, and we're not going to talk about all the things that it does, because it's an omnibus. It does a lot of damn things. 
Um, but one thing related to this discussion about gun violence that I wanted to come in and clarify here. Uh, Republicans have agreed to update and clarify some language around what the Centers for Disease Control can and can't do, right? Now, we've talked about this before. 1996 amendment filed by the now late Representative Jay Dickey of Arkansas, which was inserted into a government funding bill that year, much like this one, and has since been renewed annually, was largely read as, the CDC can't study gun violence. That's what the takeaway was, right? The Dickey Amendment, everyone thought, okay, the Dickey Amendment says the CDC can't study gun violence, right? Now, you may have heard that talked about out there in your political circles. It may be something that you've heard. Um, here's what the amendment actually says. Quote, none of the funds made available in this title may be used in whole or in part to advocate or promote gun control. And many Republicans are saying, that didn't say you can't research, but interestingly enough, it also removed the exact dollar amount of funding that had been going to gun violence research. Okay. So, in this new funding bill, Republicans agreed to clarify the wording to basically say the CDC can't promote gun control still. Still can't promote gun control as the solution, right? But it can still conduct research. In fiscal 2014 through 2017, President Obama requested $10 million each year specifically for CDC gun violence research, but the Republican-controlled House shot it down every single time. It's almost like they're afraid that we're going to find that, like, I don't know, we need fewer guns in this country and somebody might come for their guns or their NRA campaign contributions. <laughs> I don't know what they could possibly find if they <clears throat> if you got nothing to hide, let us study it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's important to point out that former Representative Dickey changed course himself. In a twenty fifteen NPR interview, he expressed regret over the effect of the bill, saying that when they wrote and passed it, they had no idea that it would stop su all study completely. And that he was only concerned at the time with stopping, quote, the collection of data so they can advocate gun control. That's all he was trying to do, all right? Now, hopefully, you can see how this was all easily construed to mean stop the research, because if the research shows that a lack of gun control is a leading cause or a contributor to gun-related violence, that seems like another way to say, maybe we need gun control. <laughs> but technically, I guess they're right. Like, learning that... Having guns leads to gun violence doesn't say anything about what we should do, right? This is an is-ought issue, right? Mm -hmm. all, it's, all it can say is, we have a gun problem. Here are the factors that lead to our gun problem, right? Right. Whether, whatever those are, right? Whether it's uh, toxic masculinity and uh, white people being white people and whatever it whatever. is, right? Whatever they find, all they can say is, here's what we found. This is what it is. They cannot say, here's what we ought to do about it. Though, the CDC often does recommend stuff, right? Like, that's <laughs> kind of what part of what they do. So that, uh, that pushed through the... Uh, the president signed it. Although, did you see he tweeted this weird, like, <laughs> I'm gonna... Um, I'm considering, you know, I'm considering vetoing this. I'm not gonna sign it. And then he ended up signing it. Like, like what? literally, like, ten minutes later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Okay, the next story. Do you remember a few weeks ago we talked about that asshole, Leslie Gibson... Um, <laughs> who's the Republican candidate running unopposed in Maine mm. for the House? Who, Why is someone not who, running again? Who, who, oh, right? oh, stay, oh, stay with oh, me. Stay oh, with me. Oh, oh, I have great news. This is the good, <laughs> this is the good news story that leads us to the break. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Mandy needs a break. I need a break. <laughs> I need a heavy pour is what I need. I, I need another bottle. Okay. <laughs> so oh this, God. this guy, uh, Leslie Gibson, Republican candidate running unopposed for Maine's 57th House District, who tweeted this rage tweet that said, quote, there is nothing about this skinhead lesbian that impresses me. Yeah, and there is nothing that she has to say 
<clears throat> unless you're a frothing at the mouth moon bat, end quote. And some clarification required. Number one, the skinhead lesbian oh. is Parkland shooting survivor turned activist Emma Gonzalez, who is actually Ooh. bisexual, BT dubs. Right. So by erasure. Number two, David Hogg, who we just heard from, the adult shill. Right. Uh. Right. Uh, another Parkland activist survivor. Uh-huh. Tweet- Cameron Caskey is the guy. Oh, that's the guy. Yeah. Yes. Ca- yeah. That's that. down Rubio. Cameron. <laughs> Tweet, uh, <laughs> David Hogg tweeted for someone to hero. run against Gibson, oh. and the next day, Aaron Gilchrist, nice. a 28-year-old Democrat in Ooh. that district, oh. announced that she would run against him. Yes. Good. Look at that. Beat his ass. And number three, last week, Gibson dropped out of the race. <gasps> <laughs> Good. Victory. Well, his PR people probably went, you dumbass. You just buried yourself. Oh, yeah. Right. Like, why would you do that? Like, oh. All right. I'll give you one more good news oh. story before we All right, good. lead out here. Um, Adam York is a junior at the Academy of Environmental Science at Crystal River High School. And we just talked about Crystal River. Yes, we did. For their, that was an elementary te- No, a middle school teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was hosting a white nationalist <laughs> podcast. Success. Oh, <laughs> God. Uh, Nicholas Lajera is a senior at Lecanto High School. Both 18 years old. They have filed to run for a seat on the Citrus County, Florida School Board. Yes, I did see this. This is amazing. The District wow. 5 seat is currently held by Linda Powers, who is running for her fourth term. And retired teacher Tim Stewart has also filed to run for the seat. Nice. Stewart began teaching in Citrus County Schools in 1981. Okay? Here's what I think is so fucking cool about this. While many of the olds will look at these young people as dumb kids with no life experience, and we, you know, that's one of the things we noticed at the at the march today. Like mm-hmm. that's the the thing about these kids is that you know they have opinions that matter. Right. Like they well, are the ones going through this, and if you're 53 years old, it's been a long damn time since you were in high school, and times have changed. Right. Who is it? Bob Doyle uh-huh. got up there, yes. and he said. You know, da, 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 all whatever. These kids have some great ideas. I'm gonna let them run this, uh, you know. Yeah, but they're yeah, not yeah. saying anything. I haven't been saying for years. I just didn't have the, you know, I couldn't get anybody's attention or whatever. People ignored me. So right. But, but you know what? They're yeah. living right. They're, they're living, living their, their the experience mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they say they don't have life experience. <laughs> they're yeah. they're in it. Yeah, they're in it. Yep. So they are, by the way, eighteen. Mm-hmm. These these two kids, particularly. I call them kids because I'm old. <laughs> uh, which means we've agreed, as a society, that they're they can drive, smoke, and vote at mm-hmm. this point. Okay? So that counts for something. But they're also not like 30 decades removed from what it's like to be a student. And as we've talked with these shootings in so many other ways, our schools have changed mm-hmm. drastically. Since even, like, the late 90s when I graduated high school. Right. Like, things have changed so quickly. This is my favorite quote from the whole thing. 18-year-old, now county school board candidate Adam York says, quote, On the school board, there's five spots, and each of the spots is taken by either a parent or a teacher, but there's no student. Why not have a student to represent that diverse spot? Hmm. Have a board. Such a good idea. Have a board that's made up of different types of people, different ideas, different mindsets, and coming from different places. End quote. How about that kid, huh? Like seriously, that's a great idea. And you think about like I think about my school board. They okay. They may have been parents of kids who went through the district twenty years ago, right? And then they just kept their seat and they just and just because yeah, right. Which is not to say that you are not necessarily relevant anymore. Right. But that there are other voices that should be included. Yeah. Like with PTO, you cannot be on the PTO if your kid is not in the school. Right. So why should you be allowed to be on the school board if you don't have a kid in the system? That's right. That makes complete sense. Right. Yeah. Or now, if you're not like a retired teacher, I can understand that. But right. like there, there's also a really good argument that <clears throat> like, OK, we let's say we chose not to have children. Right. The. The education system still affects 
us too in in ways, right? Not not as directly in that we have right. children who are being right now right. impacted, but you know what I mean? Well, we pay tax dollars right. to the school exactly. system. The kids that are being put through the school system if it impacts Right. If I'm paying society. for it, I should have a voice in it. Right. Those people. Yeah. yeah. Like I can understand all of those arguments, but maybe like but he's got a good point there. Make it diverse. Right. Have like a quota of people that have to have kids in the system. Have a quota of how many students or fresh out of like within three or four years of graduating. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, in that between the ages of whatever. And, right. Yeah. 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 Like and, put a put a limit on it. On it so, right. But, and maybe it's not the whole board. Right. Maybe it's just and, the, right. a seat. Right. It has this to might be, be occupied crazy, by a, some. But give them some experience <laughs> that you say what? they're lacking. Right. Oh, my God. That makes me think of like <laughs> the people who are hiring who are like. You know, mm-hmm. I want you to have experience. You're like, how do I get experience unless you give me a job? Right. right. Yeah. That whole. Yep. Double edged sword. Um, okay. Wow. Mm. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. Um, I'm going to reload <laughs> here. Uh, for those of you, if anyone's seen Dan, um, we're looking for Dan. We haven't heard from him. Yeah, we're kind of worried, worried about him. About Dan. Um, but Dan invented the Saratok drinking game, which is every time my coaster lights up, you have to take a drink. Yeah. So if you're playing along at home. I can't even see. I'm about to, uh, oh. I'm about to heavy pour. Yeah. Um, when we come back, we'll get into the grab bag news of the week. And uh, we'll do a Florida Man segment, too, Yay. at the end of the thing, too. That'll be great. All right. Hang tight. We'll be back. You're listening to Saratok. Today we decided to walk to school. The light counted. 15, 41, 31, I mean 13. We took a left on Carroll Street. Danny's smart, but he gets distracted. I realized he forgot his homework. I hope I don't have another bad day at school. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Brought to you by Understood and the Ad Council. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline at 1-866-488-7386. Ask for help. In today's health-conscious society, you have many beverage choices. But do you know what's in all of them? So much sugar, sodium, and things you can't even pronounce. Dihydrogen monoxide. What's that? Sometimes you wish you just had a simple, more elegant solution for your beverage needs. Introducing H2O, the first ever chemical-free thirst quencher. H2O is simple, simply composed of three portions of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. H2O means chemical-free, unlike water, which is filled with all sorts of shit. When we tested H2O, we found traces of no other elements. So pure, the bottle may as well be fucking empty. With all the same nutritional content as a breath of cool mountain air. First widely featured on Goop.com, actress Gwyneth Paltrow revealed that she exclusively uses H2O for her vaginal steaming process. After all, why use water when you can steam it with H2O? So now we invite you to run out to your local garden hose and drink that shit. Remember, it's not water, it's H2O. H2O bottled by Flint Bottling Company in Flint, Michigan. Product not actually endorsed by Goop or Gwyneth Paltrow. Please do not use H2O for vaginal steaming, or better yet, please do not steam your vagina. H2O is actually just water. Water is a set of molecular compounds. It's a chemical. Everything is a chemical. Want to join the conversation or tell Sarah she's wrong? Email producer at saratalk.com or call 224-40-SARAH. That's 224-407-2724. Now, more Sarah Talk. And if you're going to call 407, whatever the hell our number is, 224-407-2724, 
and troll with us, you better have some fucking evidence to back your claims. I just said, watch out. Sarah's wife will ban you if you want to tell her she's wrong. <laughs> no, I, you know. No, I, we're, it, whatever. Yeah, it unless is. he, here's the thing. It, unless he gets out of control. Right. Eh, you can come, again, like. Bring your differences of opinion. Yeah, yeah, challenge my Let's have a opinions, conversation about it. Challenge my beliefs, but let's not, I'm rubber, your glue. I'm going to act like a four-year-old. Right. Okay. And no name calling and no disrespect. Just let's have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and yeah. that was the whole beginning. Like, bring the proof. Right. Yep. Show which, me the evidence. Which I'm and still waiting for. Yep. Just... For those of you who missed the excitement in the <sighs> Facebook chat tonight, you should be listening and watching Sarah Talk live <laughs> on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, tune in to go to Facebook.com slash Sarah Talk Radio. My temper got a little out of control. And, uh, yeah. But yours Man. did first. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. I've seen her temper out of control. When her temper is out of control, I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> I liked the I slamming scared. of the paper. <laughs> Naomi, Sarah is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Give me evidence. Okay. Um, no, just kidding. <laughs> I would never ban you, Naomi. <laughs> so we are going to the grab bag in the news stories here. Um, up first, a story from the Miami Herald. Oh, Miami. That's like my, my hometown, sort of. <laughs> Go on. Like your streets. My streets. It's, it's streets. Great. It's <laughs> 53 year old Diane Williams had been working at Kingsway Christian Academy for 12 years. And now the teacher has been charged with child abuse and released from Orange County Jail on a $1,000 bond. I think she's from Orlando. I think this is an Orlando school. Of course. Um, after being taken into custody last week. According to arrest reports, another teacher at the Christian school, noticed a bruise on a five-year-old's foot, and when asked what happened, the boy said that Mrs. Williams had sent him to an isolated private prayer room, which is inside a bathroom in the classroom, so a, a closet, and, <laughs> and was told to, quote, sit on the bench and talk to Jesus, end quote, for misbehaving. Five-year-old. So... Yeah. Fuck that shit. But, the, though the child says he did not but, see Jesus. How did the well. foot get injured? Aha. <laughs> so many questions. When Mrs. Williams entered the room a few minutes later, she stomped on the <gasps> child's foot, <gasps> leaving a bruise. A oh. About her arrest. Hell no. The Kingsway Christian Academy said in a statement. Quote, we love our children. You they are, are so, so white. <laughs> they are precious to us and precious to God. Mrs. Williams is an amazing teacher and loved by her hundreds of students from over the years, their parents and grandparents. End quote. But according to the Orange County Sheriff's Office investigation, that's basically bullshit. <laughs> they said video footage completely uh. corroborates what the child said. They had this woman on video doing oh, this shit. shit. Miss, oh, shit. Mrs. Williams was one of the most sought-after teachers in the school, too. Oh, my God. Don't tell me shit like that. Could As, you imagine if your kids came home? Like, right? listen, that I'm having issues with a teacher we have now, and we don't like her. But if I found out that the teacher that I like, that I really want, foot? is that way... Oh, five? Five? Fuck that. The, p the police probably wouldn't have even gotten her. The police would have had to get to me first because right. I would have been like, right. you're going to stomp on my child's foot? I'm going to put you down on the ground and I'm going to stomp on your face. I've done it before. Ask my brother when he was a baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be happy to know Mrs. Williams has been let go. Good. And The, the views of this show are strictly... <laughs> 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 and oh the Department of Children and Family Services is investigating further. Please tell me, like, what happens now? Like, I really want to know, when you are a teacher and you lose your job for that kind of right. shit, can but you just assault. go to a different state and yeah. get a new teaching job somewhere? Right. Well, in a Christian school where you probably don't even have to have any kind of formal education or certificate. Fucking bullshit. That's true. Mm -hmm. Sure you can. You don't even have to leave the state. Like, I seriously, I had a problem with my son, our son's kindergarten teacher would take pictures of him crying and throwing a fit and yeah. text them to me and say, yeah. he's been sitting on the floor crying for an hour. And mind you, he was in kindergarten. I was at home breastfeeding a brand new baby. Are you kidding and me? And she would text me pictures of him crying. Mm -hmm. That was problematic to me. I couldn't imagine finding out that my son's got a bruise on his foot because uh -huh. some teacher 
sent him to talk to Jesus and then stomped on his mm-hmm. foot. Fuck that. I didn't even like going in the bathroom when I was in elementary school in the little single stall mm-hmm. because of the whole bl- bl- Bloody Mary thing in the mirror freaked the <laughs> fuck out of me. And I was terrified <laughs> of the single stall bathroom because there's a huge mirror and it was uh-huh. dark and scary. So I remember when I was traumatized when I was little and we were on recess, we weren't allowed <clears> to go <throat> use the bathroom if we were outside. What if you had to pee? Right. And I remember I had to pee and oh. they were like, oh, you have a detention. I remember my mom came to that school and she was pissed. Mm-hmm. She was pissed. You Mm-mm. don't tell my child she can't go to the bathroom. No. I remember oh, one man. winter I it was freezing cold and, may or and may it was not snowy and I just... peed myself. Did on you? the playground. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Teacher would not let me go inside. No. That's I just pretended I had to pee because I <laughs> wanted to see what would happen. <laughs> and I won that. In fourth grade, I won that. Nice. There you go. <laughs> but you actually Yeah, I needed to go. They refused me. Yeah. Like how can you refuse Right. And and like I... grade school when you know, like in the middle of winter and there's it's it's Illinois. It snows all over the place. Fucking cold. And I'm in like and... the Christmas story snowsuit where I can't put my arms down. I, <laughs> right? That was me. Um, Any teachers, feel free to yeah. pop in and say, why can't the kids go to the bathroom? Right? right? That was stupid. What, what's yeah. the big deal? Okay, we got off on a tangent Yeah, there. we did. Okay, uh, the next story. <laughs> As I throw pieces of my pen around. The next story uh, in the commercial break, I intentionally included our spoof commercial uh, from Jake Vahaba mm-hmm. when we made fun of H2O as the water mm-hmm. yeah. supplement. So for those of you listening in the Patreon feed who don't get the ads, you missed that. You're missing it. But I did release that mm. um, and a behind the scenes of of Jake like ad-libbing all mm. of the stuff that it was a really all the amazing... stuff that didn't go into the the ad was is on this is in the Patreon. It was really an amazing as a day. bonus. <laughs> um, so anyway, the the ad, which among <laughs> other things, pokes fun at Gwyneth Paltrow and Coop, and Kate Middleton is in on this woo garbage. Oh Jesus! <laughs> alternative medicine nonsense too. Kate Middleton. Yeah. Okay. Now, I can't believe we have to keep saying things like this, but don't put jade eggs up your vagina. Vaccines don't cause autism and are generally safe for the vast majority of humans. And bee acupuncture is just plain dangerous bullshit. Have you ever heard of this? Uh uh-uh. uh. Acupuncture with bees. Mm. Apotherapy. Oh. Oh, oh, not like B vitamins. No, like. Bzz, 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 bzz. <laughs> Here, let me sting you in your nerve <laughs> with a bee. That has venom, venom. in it. Bee venom. Apothe. What? Uh, bee venom. Yeah. Apotherapy, otherwise known <laughs> as a bee acupuncture treatment, involves basically live honeybee stings instead of needles. The American Apotherapy Society, Incorporated, read, not a health agency, but a company, <laughs> says that bee products, quote, promote health healing by improving circulation, decreasing inflammation, and stimulating a healthy immune response. Yeah, it's nothing. Okay. Uh, which is pretty much what you hear anytime anybody's talking about any kind of alternative, whatever, right? It won't go automatically, Imp- right? No, okay. improving circulation, decreased inflammation, <laughs> healthy immune system, right? That's the that's the buzzwords for for all of the uh, oh. for all of the the best alternative medicines. <laughs> okay, I just had an amazing idea. Oh, God, for a schemey money making greatest medical advancements. Let's do <laughs> semen puncture. <laughs> Have, didn't, haven't people, we done that before? If people are going to freaking put... <laughs> well, you know, I can attest it's really healthy. <laughs> oh my God. But people are putting bee venom in the... What, Right, there's more. What's more? What's what's more? Oh God! A 55 year old Spanish woman is now dead, having undergone these treatments no. once a month for two years <gasps> to treat stress and muscle tension. Well, she's not stressed anymore, and her muscles you're are terrible. Tenser than... God, you're terrible. <laughs> Wait, but I have a I'm question. sorry. I have a question. Okay. The rigor mortis. It's just. Was it working up until Getting her there. death? 
Okay. Oh, too soon. Okay. Okay. There's more. According oh. to a report published recently in the Journal of in, in, Investigational Allergology and <laughs> Clinical Immunology. Good job. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> During the last session, of course, it's the last session. Immediately after receiving, I'm sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> Mine was much worse, but still. I'm so sorry to your family. Immediately <laughs> after receiving family. a live bee sting. Her breathing became labored, and she suddenly lost consciousness. 30 minutes later, an ambulance finally arrives. Pumps are full of adrenaline, corticosteroids, and antihistamines, mm. and on the way to the hospital, her heart rate stabilized. Mm. But she died several weeks later of multiple organ failure. According to the journal, she suffered a, quote, massive watershed stroke and permanent coma, end quote, due to persistent hypertension stemming from her severe anaphylactic episode. And put all of that aside, scientifically, it's nonsense. There's no good reason to undergo this treatment. Alternative medicine and are, is not medicine. Aren't we trying to save the bees? Well, <clears throat> sure. Okay, just checking. And while you may think like, hey, it's better than, you know, big scary pharma drugs that I don't know what they're going to do to me and I can't well. pronounce their names... This pseudoscientific garbage can be dangerous. Here's your proof. Even deadly. Wow. <laughs> Hang on. I got to mark down another edit time. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. So I uh, wasn't saying anything because I knew it was coming. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay. So she had stress. Seemed like she was doing okay with it for a while, but then... Like, like she had been doing it for two years. Then she had a, an anaphylactic That's episode. That's so crazy. Yeah. But you know what? <laughs> it just, it, that's scary though, because yeah. she's been doing it for two years and she probably, she probably thought it was working for her mm -hmm. and that's why she continued to do it. Yep. And, and how much of that was placebo? Right, Again, exactly. talking about alternative medicine. Exactly. How much of that was, I wanted it to work, I believed right. in it, so it worked. Sure. I just, it's, it's... Or it could have even been to the point where she caused herself to have an allergy, having so much of it inside yeah, of her. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, and they said in the article that I was reading that um, that, that repeated exposure, like, reduces the the immune system's ability to to handle it i guess right in, this, in in the cases of venom sure well that's with, with it's not like an inoculation where it makes right. your body able to fight it off well i mean i i have um i i know a few people with like different like like shellfish or seafood oh, yeah. allergies yeah, yeah. where each time they have um an exposure the symptoms get worse with each Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, it starts very mildly, but each time you expose right. yourself to it, you get, now you're at the point where you need an EpiPen, and if somebody walks by smelling like a shrimp, right. you, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, your face swells up. Right. And, yeah. So, I, and that's how some of my, um, lo, like, tolerance with certain foods has mm -hmm. progressed, too. Like, mm -hmm. so I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Just pretend to be. Neither are these people, apparently. No. No. <laughs> okay, so the final thing is this the last thing. The last thing I have for tonight. The best stories start with once upon a time no. in Florida. <laughs> Basically, no. Uh, <laughs> what really happened in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> the first story in this week's Florida Man segment comes from the Palm Beach Post, so you know it's going to be good. Yes. Oh my gosh, was it a Marlago? Uh, please, no. Please. Nah. Uh, video surveillance footage at Royal Palm Beach Sunoco gas station <laughs> Close enough. shows a Florida man in a white tank top and dark pants. Of course he was. Pull up to the station in a dark car, hop out of the vehicle, lift a baby in a car seat out of the car, and run into the store. He knocked on the door, middle of the night, getting the attention of the overnight clerk, handed the five-month-old baby over, saying, Take the baby! Take the baby! The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office said the suspect stole that black Kia Rio from another gas station around 4 a.m. 
It had been left with its engine running. Kids, this is why you never leave the car running when you go inside. Uh Especially don't leave your fucking baby inside the car with the car running and go inside. So he steals the Kia, realizes that there's a... If there's a baby in the car, and then drives six miles to this other gas station, right, where he hands off the baby to the clerk, hops back in the car, and takes off. What I want to know is, he stole the car at four in the morning? Uh-huh. What kind of <laughs> irresponsible, dumbass parent has got their baby in a car at four in the morning and, are and in then the car. leaves them in the car running right. to leave the car? Right. So this is technically two Florida Yes, yeah, this, this is, is all the one. one of the Florida people. All the Florida people all at once. When Florida people collide on the next episode of Sarah Talk. Ugh. So this gas station clerk calls 911. Deputies contacted the mother, got everybody reunited. Baby was, uh. baby was fine. But at the time of the writing here, um, the man was still on the run, though deputies tracked the car down about three miles east of the gas station. Oh, my God. Oh, he went real far. So he, like, yeah. I mean, I'm glad that... He did the right thing where the child was concerned. Yeah, yeah, right. Because right. a lot of stories would have just killed the kid. And yeah, yeah, moved just on. taken off. Yeah. Or, or thrown him off the st- out. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> grand theft auto, okay. Kidnapping, Murder, kidnapping, yeah. right? So <laughs> there's a line. <laughs> he did have a little bit of moral, um, what what substance? Yeah, yeah. It's in there somewhere. Are you gonna crinkle that wrapper under that microphone? I'm gonna get so mad. <laughs> I wasn't gonna just turn it off. I really wasn't gonna. Uh, okay, the second story this week. I'll give you a minute to open your candy. Let me know when you're ready. Hold on, I gotta eat a white ball. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be white. The Those second story. The dark chocolate <laughs> one. <laughs> the second story this week. Last month, uh, actually, Port St. Lucie police responded to a report of a crash at 3:30 a.m. A silver Ford van with dark tinted windows was reported leaving the scene. An officer stopped the silver van and, according to the affidavit, saw a man, quote, look at me through the large side view mirror in the driver's seat and then jumped back into the back seat and pretended he was asleep. (laughs) (laughs) Now, the best part of the story is that the man, when the man tried to pull the vehicle in park before jumping in the back seat, he missed. He put it in reverse, oh, shit. and it backed into the police car. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Where was this? Uh, Port St. Lucie. Oh my god! <laughs> I just got an article on my breaking news about. I'm sorry to interrupt the Florida man. Fun. Yeah. About a counter protest that have been happening today that are marching in support of guns. Yeah, I don't want to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, no, they're assholes. Don't worry. Um, okay, so <laughs> it turns out the driver, 23 year old Estuado Shaz. What? I don't know how you pronounce his name. Chaz. Chak. 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 C H A J. I don't know. Don't care. Chag. Was Chag. from Guatemala. Oh. And yeah, had only been in the country 15 days. <laughs> He's never had a driver's license issued to him and failed a field sobriety exercise. Oh, shit. And so was arrested on hit and run, DUI, and operate motor vehicle without a valid license charges. Let me guess. Are they going to send him to Guantanamo or are they going <laughs> to send terrible. him back to Guatemala? That's terrible. Just saying. I don't know. I mean, they're cracking down on immigrants. He's been here for 15 days. Right. He's, hey, look, this is the guy that's the coming law. to turk your gerbs. He's this already... is the guy. Watch he, out for this guy. He's, he's coming to turk your gerbs. Yeah. <laughs> they turk our gerbs. Now I have to mix it, in this. Oh, <laughs> God. They turk our gerbs. Uh, okay. I didn't write any fun headlines for these like I normally do. Right. Because I ran out of time. So, um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so, you still have to choose. Which Florida man story you like the best? I like the I you like have the, the guy surprise who kidnapper. took the yeah took took the car, <laughs> found a baby, that handed was the baby two for off. One. Yeah. Right, grand theft kidnapping. Um, I don't know this Guatemalan guy with the trying to <laughs> pretend Put to be it. asleep after he <laughs> reversed the car into the. Wait, he was like, the only person like, in the vehicle. I was just vault. I just pulled you over. I'm, 
Uh, <laughs> like, was he the only person as in the vehicle? Far as, as far like, as I'm aware, yes. That has to be the winner. Just okay. Because... But if, is he a legal citizen? Because that... He, is he really know, a Florida only, man? Uh, that's debatable. Ooh, that's a good call. Oh, oh. you're right. Yeah, that's true. So are you going with the uh, the other story then? Yeah, oh, man, because it's not a legitimate. <laughs> we don't we don't have enough oh. information. Mm. Crap. <sighs> I guess yeah, that's a good point. All right, we'll let the listeners decide then. Yeah. Uh, we'll put a poll on the Sarah Talk Facebook group. If you're not a member of that, you should be. And I'll put it up on Twitter as well. Um, when this episode comes out, we'd like for you to share the episode post on Facebook or uh, retweet our episode post on Twitter. And um, since I didn't come up with headlines for them this time, you get to make up the fun headlines. Ooh. Uh, pick the favorite story that you, whichever one you like better, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you can make up a fun headline. You can just tell us why you chose that story and uh, retweet or share the episode and we'll pick somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't anything interesting from last week, so... Uh, the challenge is on. Uh, share, retweet this week's episode when it goes live. And we'll pick somebody that we find entertaining mm -hmm. and uh, shout you out on the next show. Word. Word. Um, final thoughts. Anyone? Final thoughts? <clears throat> I had fun today. Yes. Thank you for coming. The March I, was, was great. Good. Yeah, it was yeah. fun seeing you guys again. Yes. I had fun. And I love seeing everyone else's marches that they attended in their city on mm -hmm. Facebook. So it's yeah. really encouraging to see um, so many people. You know, you've got <clears throat> these kids that, that started the movement, but you've got our local, like when I saw our local yeah. kids, like yeah. kids that were that, from the high schools that our children will yeah, yeah. most likely attend. Yep. And right. just like the, these are going to be their, their role models. Mm -hmm. Like it just gave me hope, which is... Hard yeah. to come by. Well, and, and again, like, you think this should have happened after Columbine. It should have. It should have. Right. It should have right. happened after Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. it, name all of these Every terrible single. tragedies. Yep. But this time it's different. Thank God. Right? It's It it feels different. These kids are on the move mm -hmm. to make change, and that's just fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I really... just awesome. I really enjoyed listening to the kids at at our on our local level. Like mm -hmm. it, it really, um... yeah. These are kids that like they may not have been directly impacted, right? These weren't kids who right. someone came into their school with a gun. Like they right. they may not have experienced it firsthand, but they're close enough to it. Well, and like the the girl that was talking about the fire alarm. Yes. And, and even even yes. the even like the they they just had such a different perspective that when you sit down and you listen to them talk about their day to day experience being a high school student and mm -hmm. you know the first day afterwards I'm numb I I don't know what to do yes mm -hmm. that was um, such a powerful every time speech. you hear a s sneakers screeching on the floor in an empty hallway yep. every time the door opens you jump every you know like knowing that. They're just sitting there, feeling like sitting ducks. Yep. Waiting. Is it is today the day that we become a statistic? Yep. This um, changed. No child them. should have to. Yeah. Deal with that. Yeah. And and I'm I'm glad that it's happening now. Mm -hmm. Um. Finally, right. I'm sad that it had to take so much and so many lives and tear apart so many families. But um, I do. This does feel different all around the world. Every single yep. kid, mm -hmm. every single parent, every single person who was there and participated mm -hmm. and or supported or watched mm -hmm. or rallied yep. or like everyone should be proud of themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So before we go, um, I want to share with you that uh, some things that we're working on for some upcoming shows. Um, I'm going to work on I'm working on a show to discuss the uh, death penalty. Talk about capital punishment. Mm -hmm. Is that a right a, a good thing for us to have in society. Um, you know, and, and in that we may get into death with dignity and end of life mm -hmm. rights and all of that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, just uh, death in general, like from a ph philosophical That's be a really interesting standpoint. conversation. Yep. Uh, Bob Doyle, who is running for yep. office uh, here, 
was at the event today. Um, he has agreed to appear on the show. I believe we have him booked for the seventh. Okay. So awesome. he's going to come in studio. Is he? So oh, that'll, that'll be, be great. Really he is such he is such a personable he's guy. So nice. Just a real warm, genuine yeah. guy. Um, Even today, like he like didn't talk for more than like three yeah, or four yeah. minutes. Like he just yep. just listen to them. Like this is yep. their thing. Like but he was like there to show presence. He was, yeah, yeah. but he didn't sit there yeah. and say his name or his website thirty seven times. Right, like some other people did. <laughs> Which we still didn't catch the name. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, said his even name then. like 18 times. I'm like, what was that? Yep, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he was saying it so fast you couldn't really understand it. But right. whatever. Uh, so we're working on getting getting him in to the studio. I believe that's the 7th. That's awesome. And um, the other show topic that I'm working on is uh, religiosity in recovery programs. And I want to talk about AA specifically. But also... You know, Narcotics Anonymous or whatever all these other groups are. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I want to talk about there's there's a specific component that asks for you to turn yourself over to a higher power, to give yourself over to a higher power. And I'm curious from a psychological standpoint, from from like, is while it does work for many people, yes, absolutely, agreed, but it does shut out a number of people who don't believe in that kind of thing. Even if your higher power, because they say you can, your higher power can be anything, right? Be whatever you want it to be. Your higher power is science. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way for me. And if I were ordered by the judge to attend a recovery program and I walk in the door and the first thing they make me do is say the Lord's Prayer, I've got some problems with that. Right. So there is a secular <laughs> organization who does similar work. Um, their director has agreed to come on the show as well, so I'm working on getting wow, that really book. we got a lot of good stuff coming up. Remember yep. when you changed this, though, the show to Saturday, and I can't... <laughs> but you got to come today! Yay! Woo! And put in for uh, every Saturday Polk off. Pride. Yeah, right. And you put can in come for every with Saturday. us. I'll give you the dates. June date. 16th, we will be yes, at Polk we'll Pride. Be. I know I took June 12th off for, for Pulse, mm-hmm. so I'll see if June... Just take the whole fucking week off. Yeah, just... Yeah, whatever. I will see if it's available. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we go, we want to make sure we thank our wonderful patrons at patreon.com slash sarah talk oh that's me that's you mandy is now a patron because <laughs> i can't be here anymore so I, we, we appreciate it it helps us well it helps us pay for things like uh going to polk pride no. well no, no, too, but, uh you know yeah setting up a booth at polk pride costs money yeah absolutely period the end, you yeah. know uh, these microphones are really fucking expensive. Uh, <laughs> well, they're better than the ones we had. Oh my god, when we started, so started were awful. Oh, I still have some of uh, some we of had that a, stuff. We, but... We're gonna have to replace the laptop pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... There's yeah, there's expenses that come along with doing this thing, and, right. and while we do it because we enjoy doing it and it's a yep. lot of fun, um, it you know it it does cost. It costs time and money. So, but it's nice. I appreciate you have it. Those, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And we have a great group of people. Yeah. Who uh, who help us out every single week? Part time patron Russell, Andrea, the Wayward Willis podcast, Mandy <gasps> in studio, Mandy, Yay! Josie, Harry, Jeremy, Stacy, Megan, and AJ. You are the most wonderful people in the world. We love you so much. Tune in next Saturday right here, eight p.m. Eastern, on the Facebook Live broadcast. Follow Saratok dot com. You can get links to all the stuff that we have there. And we'll see you next week. This is Sarah Talk. Sarah Talk is made possible by listener support. Visit patreon.com slash Sarah Talk to become a patron and help keep this program going. Contact Sarah and company by email at producer at saratalk.com or call 224-40-SARAH. That's 224-407-2724. And follow us on social media facebook.com slash Sarah Talk Radio, and on Twitter, at Sarah Talk Radio. Sarah Talk is a production of Sarah Austin Media.